Welcome back to Honest News. Years ago, my pastor, his mother, received a dream from the Lord, and she saw this scene of a a beach scene and uh, the ocean. She saw the sea, and she noticed that there were no waves, which was very strange, no waves. And so, as she watched this scene, she said that she saw this monster-like octopus that came up out of the sea. And she said that the sea was so calm. There was a calmness to it. Uh, but yet this monster that was coming out of the sea was, was dragging people towards the sea. And uh, these people began to get sucked into this monster-like octopus. This was years and years ago that she received this dream. And after the dream was over, a voice spoke to her and said, Beware when Pentecost becomes popular. Beware when Pentecost becomes popular. Now remember, in her dream she saw the sea no waves, and it was calm. But there was a monster. There was a beast, octopus, rising out of the sea. Just like we see the book of Revelation. But it was in the form of an octopus. And I begin to think about that. Why did God show her an octopus-like creature or monster or beast? And if you know anything about what John Kennedy was exposing before they killed him, he said it was like a, like a monolithic network that was like an octopus. He described, and anybody that's ever tried to expose that was a, a whistleblower or someone that was in the Illuminati and came out or whatever, they all describe this network, this secret society, as an octopus with tentacles. And it has its tentacles in everything. Okay? So, again, beware... When Pentecost becomes popular. Now, I'm going to play this documentary for you. After this documentary, if you continue to believe that the Catholic Church is of God, you do that to your own peril. When you see those that call themselves Pentecostals, evangelicals, charismatics, when you see those that call themselves Pentecostals or experiencing a Pentecostal experience, but yet they're still connected to the Catholic Church, that is right out of Rome, people. And better yet, that's right out of the pit of hell. That's out of hell. I'm lifting up my voice and I'm warning you. Okay? I'm warning you. If you know somebody that is trapped, stuck in this terrible trap of the devil, get this to them. Get this to them. 
it may be what turns them around. It may be what gets them to see the true light. So let's go ahead and begin. After his death and resurrection, when it was time for Jesus to ascend to heaven, he told his followers to wait for the promise of the Father. With the coming of the Holy Spirit, the lives of individuals were changed. The community itself was transformed. The church was born. At the beginning of the Second Vatican Council, Pope John XXIII led the church in praying for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Renew your wonders in this our day, as by a new Pentecost. A few years later, seemingly as a result of John XXIII's prayer for renewal, a significant event took place that would forever change the lives of millions of Catholics and the Church itself. On a weekend retreat, these Catholic students prayed that, in some way, they too might discover a renewed sense of Pentecost in their lives. I prayed a prayer of complete surrender to the Father, saying, Father, I place my life in your hands, and I desire to follow Jesus, your Son, whatever that means. If it means to suffer, I accept that. Only teach me to love with his love. As I prayed that prayer kneeling, I found myself in the next few moments prostrate, overwhelmed with the sense of God's personal love for me. In the next hour, God sovereignly drew all the students at that retreat house up into the chapel where we knelt before Jesus. They prayed the Veni Creator Spiritus, the very same hymn sung by Pope Leo XIII on January 1st, 1901, asking for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the whole church. Other students, and even their teachers, began to join them, praying that they too might experience this fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And they did. The charismatic renewal continued to spread at an amazing rate throughout the world. Those who prayed for the experience that came to be known as baptism in the Spirit had experiences similar to all the others, a new depth of prayer, love for the scriptures, a devotion to the Eucharist, a heart for evangelization, a call to conversion, and a life of holiness. Many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and religious life concerned for the needy, the formation of deeper relationships and even lay communities, experiencing various spiritual gifts or charisms, healing, music. The Holy Spirit of this charismatic renewal has indeed been a source of personal renewal for individuals and an impetus for renewal within the church itself. I began to experience a tremendous joy in my priesthood. I began to have a great compassion for people. I discovered through the charismatic renewal, through the baptism of the Holy Spirit, something deeper than that which I'd had previously. And that deeper thing was a new relationship with Jesus Christ. That changed my life. He is very much alive in us. And he wants to talk to us. And he wants to communicate with us. And not only that, he gave us so many gifts through the Holy Spirit. And therefore, he is asking us to use these gifts. And to use these gifts to be like him to continue his work. Now, once you know who you are, therefore you can talk about it with passion. You talk about it with enthusiasm, which literally means en enteu, which means to be in God. What was happening among Catholics that got the attention of Cardinal Leon Joseph Sunins, a key architect of the Second Vatican Council. On Pentecost Sunday in 1975, Cardinal Sunins and 10,000 individuals who had this charismatic experience met with Pope Paul VI. We are pleased to see signs of this renewal. This is a day of joy, but also a day of resolve and determination to open ourselves 
to the Holy Spirit and to proclaim in the Christian authenticity that Jesus is Lord. I'd like to mention right here that the scripture makes it clear that Satan comes as an angel of light. This is how he's coming. This is how he's coming. They think, many think this is the real Holy Spirit. So there is a real spirit involved in all of this. And it's Satan, folks. The beast is rising out of the sea of people. The beast is rising. And what does the Bible say? What does the, the, the scripture tell us? Come out of her, my people. Right? Come out of her. Not to be partakers of her sins. Priceless dignity that is theirs in Christ. I ask you and all the members of the charismatic renewal to continue to cry aloud to the world with me. Open the doors to the Redeemer. Thanks to the charismatic movement, many Christians, men and women, youth and adults, have rediscovered Pentecost as a living and present reality in their daily life. I desire that the spirituality of Pentecost be spread in the church. International Catholic Charismatic Renewal Services. ECRIS was approved by the Holy See as a private association of the faithful with a juridical personality. It operates under the direction of the Pontifical Council for the Laity. Its purpose is threefold. Promote the central goals of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal all over the world. Promote unity among the varied realities and expressions of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. As establish dialogue and cordial relationships with other ecclesial movements and communities within the Catholic Church and with other ecclesial communions and Christian churches. In 1998, ECRIS, with other lay movements, helped the Pontifical Council for the Laity organize an international gathering of lay movements. Over 300,000 people gathered. Today, I would like to cry out to all of you gathered here in St. Peter's Square and to all Christians, open yourselves docilely to the gifts of the Spirit. Accept gratefully and obediently the charisms which the Spirit never ceases to bestow on us. Do not forget 
that every charism is given for the common good, that is, for the benefit of the whole Church. Though the past century was marked by some of the saddest pages of history, it was at the same time studied with wonderful testimonies of spiritual and charismatic revival all areas of human life and activity. It is my firm hope that the Holy Spirit will find more and more fruitful welcome in the hearts of believers so that the culture of Pentecost, so necessary in our time, can spread. Since 1967, over 120 million Catholics in over 220 countries in the world have experienced this refreshment of the Holy Spirit. The promise Christ gave to his followers, the experience of Pentecost, the lineage of 2,000 years, the open window of Vatican II in the 1960s, are all a part of what the Catholic Charismatic Renewal is today. Like all those who have gone before, the men and women of the Catholic Charismatic Renewal today continue to pray, Come, O Creator blessed. John said, I saw a beast rising out of the sea. 